Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to talk about Varro Wide and what it takes to get that working on your uh, on your rig. Um, a lot of complications to it, so you're going to want to pay attention to this video if you ever want to try to set this up. My original intention was to demonstrate the setup of Varro Wide as well as 9600 baud packet. Uh, and it was going to incorporate into an experiment for the county I'm in and all sorts of other stuff. Um, what I found is that, uh, you know, Varro Wide's a little complicated to set up. 9600 baud packet is quite a bit more complicated to set up. Matter of fact, here's an example. All right. Let's try this one more time. This is 9600 baud packet. Take 186. All right, so all we do is we try to connect. What the Oh man! <sighs> yes, yeah, well, a little bit of an exaggeration, but it made me decide to break this up into a few different videos, okay? So this video is going to talk about basic configuration and some of the things that you're going to have to mess with with Vara Wide, uh, issues with radio compatibility and sound devices and all sorts of other stuff. So with no further ado, oh, Yep, I got to bug you. Hey, if you could, click on the subscribe button, will you? Uh, more subscribers I have, the wider the audience I get to bring this stuff to. Uh, also, uh, if you like the videos, click on like. And hey, while you're there, make a comment or two. Anyway, with that, let's go ahead and get started on setting up and configuring VaroY. All right, well, let's go ahead and dive into Varro Wide. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the difference between Vara Narrow and Varro Wide, okay? So, first off, Varro Narrow supports about a 3K audio width, okay? Uh, and that's pretty common. That, that particular width is used a lot in all sorts of different digital modes. Now, that being said, okay, when you start getting into VAR OY, they're expanding that width out, taking it to about 4.5K, uh, maybe as high as 6 sometimes if the sound card will support it and the device supports it. Now, that sounds like, eh, you know, not a big deal, but it actually is. A lot of radios have filters, right, that basically chop off anything that's over 3K. If that audio is wider than 3K, it's going gonna, it's gonna to toss it out. The only way to get it wider than 3K is to tell it that you're running 9600 baud packet which means that it's going to push it through a different filter at about 4.5K, all right? So what does that really mean? Well, it means that you have to have a radio that supports 9600 packet baud, okay? And that is not always the case with all radios. I know the Yelinkos do uh, with the data port in the back. Uh, I believe my 8900 does with the data port in the back. My uh, 991 does with the data port in the back. You hear something in common here? All of them have a data pickup in the back, okay? And the reason for that is you have to actually tell the radio that it's in 9600 baud mode. And with that, it creates some additional complications, specialty cables, all sorts of stuff like that. And when you're dealing with VARA, okay, you're not dealing with the TNC, you're dealing with a software package that creates audio. Now, the most common audio device that we all use is actually the signal link. And that signal link will do this if it's a new enough signal link. But I'm going to show you 
how you can figure out if it is or not by looking at the board. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. The first thing, uh, oh, I, full disclaimer, I'm doing this on my FT991A. Um, it's the radio that I use typically for digital FM and uh, it just seemed like a natural progression. Boy, was I ever shocked to find out, though, that when you go to use 9600 baud on the radio to get a wide enough filter so you can actually do VARA wide, you actually have to change your audio input from the built-in sound card to an external sound card that plugs in to the data port. So you're going to be making a cable and you're going to be using an external sound card. Now that sound card can be anything that you want. Um, the signal link is of course a good choice, but let's talk a little bit about that. Let me show you the pinout on the back of that 991 right there. And what I'm going to be concerned about on the 991 is I'm really only going to be concerned about data in and RT. Uh, RTY out. That's it. Uh, I don't need to worry about uh, uh, keying the radio or anything else. And of course, I need to worry about ground for these two audio connections. But I don't really need to worry about uh, push to talk because I can do that with cat controls inside of VARA. Uh, so it, it doesn't have to have push to talk coming in from here. All right. Now, if you're using a uh, uh, sound blaster to hook into a digital port on your radio. Um, of course, the push to talk and everything is going to be the same. However, there is an issue with most of the radios. Uh, they don't just have a single data in or a single data out. They might have a separate pair or a separate one for 9600 baud. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that you're going to have to use a different cable, of course, on your signal link. So there, there's a lot of pieces to this, okay? Uh, you're going to have to do jumper wires. There's all sorts of other stuff you're going to have to do on that signal link. And I probably will show a video showing that on the uh, 8900 because it has different uh, data connections than my 991, even though it's the same plug. So make sure you look at your manual, okay? Uh, but in this particular case, I needed to wire uh, to pin 1, to uh, pin 2, and also to pin 5. And that was it. But how am I going to connect that up? Well, so before we show that, Let's take a real quick look at how we choose the different uh, uh, the differences in the signal link. Okay, this is the older signal link. Now you see up here, up in the very top, up there where I've got the circle, that shows the two transformers that are the final audio input output transformers. Those are red and exposed. This is the old style. These are limited to 3K, okay? The new style are enclosed in these nice little black chips. And you know what? Those will handle uh, 4.5, I think, uh, a little higher K. And you can do, with that uh, signal link, you can do 9600. Now, the thing about that, or VARA wide, I should say, the thing about that, though, is you're going to have to change your jumpers, your cables, and everything else because you're probably going to have to change the way this goes to the radio. All right? Just a full warning. This is not a project that you want to take on lightly, okay? And it can be very frustrating. Do you remember the video I showed at the beginning? Anyway, um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the wiring uh, setup that I did for this. Okay, so here you go. So here... 
we actually have what uh, basically is a PS2 extension cable that I hacked one end off. And then I used a DVOM to turn around and ohm out what wires went where, what the color codes were. And I attached a couple 3.5 millimeter jacks on there uh, in order to go into this little Sound Blaster USB sound card. Okay. I did not use my signal link uh, because I really, for this experiment, didn't think I'd need to do it. Uh, I will show the signal link in operation most likely when I do the 8900. Uh, so, but as always, you know, you're going to need to remember to check that signal link to make sure, to make sure that it has the right um, transformers in there, okay? Anyway, so where do we go from here? Well, we got to hook all this stuff up and guess what? Um, we have to change some menu items to top it all off. So uh, let's jump into that on the 991. All right. Well, so what we have here is we have the front of my uh, uh, 991. I am going to sneak in here and we're going to make some setting changes. First off, I'm going to change it to the frequency that we currently use for VARA. So we're going to get that set up. Then I need to go into my menu and down here at the bottom you notice that my menu number 79 says 1200. I'm going to change it to 96 and then I'm going to go up to my packet port select and I'm going to change that to data. I don't need to change my push to talk. I still have it sitting over here on RTS, which is fine. That's exactly what I want. All right. So now we're all set. Well, let me kick my power up a little too here. I'm going to go up to about 25 watts. Um, remember, you really never want to do full power with one of these things, right? All right. So let me get back to another screen here. And we'll go ahead and show uh, the VARA screens and everything else in action, okay? So, here we go. All right, so I got it all set up. Now, setting the levels on this thing was a little crazy. I kind of had to throw out everything that I learned about setting levels in regular VARA and turn it into setting levels into something completely different because everything as far as I'm concerned seemed a little hot. I mean take a look at how hot my audio input is here. But if I go to my VARA setup here of course right I have to set this for wide and then of course uh, it talks about this 9600 baud um, uh, port in the back of a radio. So it, it really tries to give you those answers up front before you get too far with this. Also, if I take a look at my sound card settings, what you're going to see is you're going to see that they're both now set to that sound blaster that I showed you. And the sound blaster now has levels set that, as far as I'm concerned, are just really hot. Um, but this is how I got it to work, and this is how I got it to move data. Now, I am going to grab over here. I'm grab, going to grab an HT so I can give you some audio here of what's actually going on, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. I'm going to say close, and I am going to go ahead and try to send a 25K file using VARA wide and you can take a look at the comparison that you might be getting on files that you're sending and you'll see the performance difference so let's go ahead and try it all that looks pretty normal right there right doesn't really show a lot this is where it gets a little broader Hear that? That's the 9600 right there. That's the wide. Keep an eye on those BPS numbers.
in order to see this work, we actually have to go ahead and let it sink and make its all its timing work. It takes a while for it to calculate out its fastest speed and figure out where it's getting the best data transfer. I also am using a little trick here with the file. The file is actually a binary file. That binary file can't be compressed. So we're actually seeing the bits that are being moved here. Um, it's interesting to compare this against a standard Anyway, that was it. So, again, hot volumes. Take a look at my VU. Man, That's that to me looks a little high, but, you know, I usually like it around the middle, maybe a little farther than that. That's almost a red line, okay? But as far as that goes, everything works, and I'm getting anywhere from twice to a little more than twice the speed that I would get out of Vara Nero. So at the end of the day, is this worth it? Well, you know, for the amount of work I put into it and the amount of jockeying around and stuff I had to play with and everything else, I don't know. I don't know if the performance is that much better. Um, you know, Vara's performance is pretty good all by itself. So you got to kind of think of it that way. Um, anyway, that's what I got for this. Uh, if you have questions or anything, comments, make them down below and we'll talk to you soon. Well, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, var wide. Um, some quick takeaways. It works really well when you get it to the point where it works. It isn't a real easy, out-of-the-box thing to do. In my particular case, there's not a lot of experience with Vara Wide. Um, we have one Vara um, RMS out here uh, that's set up for Wide, and uh, that's all I got to test against. And if something doesn't work, I don't know if it's the RMS or it's me. I happen to know the owner of the RMS, and I probably drove him crazy. So for that, I'll apologize to you, Rob. But um, I figured out a lot of stuff. One of the big takeaways is that the auto-tune for Vara Wide doesn't work that well. Uh, I ended up having to do a bunch of manual tweaking to get it to connect consistency, uh, consistently. Um, and with Vara Wide, um, you know, you, uh, you get maybe double, maybe a little more than double the throughput. Uh, in our tests, that was only outbound because the RMSs don't seem to manage to be able to get their outbound up to that speed. Uh, lots of little bits and pieces that are problematic. Anyway, um, I'm sure there's better ways to set the levels and stuff like that. Um, and I'm actually going to go into the proper way to set your transmit levels and things like that for packet on the 9600 baud side um, because that's even more sensitive than Vara wide. So my big takeaway is, is the speed benefit worth the loss of reliability? Because there is truly a loss in that. And uh, I don't know if it is or not. I think that's going to be your decision to make if you decide to play with this, okay? Anyway, with that, um, future videos coming up, obviously, packet. Uh, we're going to take a look at using my 8900 to hook Vara Wide up through a signal link, the newer ones uh, that have the right transformers and see what that takes and see if there's a big difference between the 9100. Uh, my tests with the signal link showed that the audio was a little more consistent than the sound blaster that I used. Uh, I just wasn't going to tie up all the garbage in one of my um, signal links for this test and I had the sound blaster USB sound cards around anyway. So anyway with that Hey, this is Stu, AG6AG.
don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, click like. Uh, and questions, put them right down there in the comments. I usually try to answer the questions within a day or two, okay? Uh, this is Stu AG6AGC and 73, and I really hope to hear you on the air.